Hi folks, I'm Spencer and on today's episode of Court Mania we're looking at a film that is basically what would happen if Power Rangers was directed by Clive Barker. Psycho Gorman. Coming to us from writer-director Stephen Kostansky, who's probably best known for working on The Void and Father's Day, Psycho Gorman is a sort of rubber effects heavy 80s Saturday morning gore fest. It follows two siblings, Mimi and Luke, who decide to dig a hole in their back garden, a massive hole actually, uh, in which they find the sort of sarcophagus of an intergalactic warrior bent on destroying the universe. And in finding him, taking this weird gemstone thing, they wake him up. Which doesn't sound great, apart from the fact that that gemstone that they picked up is the source of his power and gives whoever wields it control of him. And in this case, that's Mimi. So they name it Psycho Goreman because they're children and that's how children name things, because they're really cool. And then they just enjoy being in control of a sort of alien barbarian creaturey thing. Which is all fun and games until a bunch of other alien weirdos turn up to try and rid the universe of this evil once and for all. And then it just turns into lots and lots of gore. But I mean the film is more than just effects, it's got a lot of sort of that sort of vaguely stand by me sort of coming of age stuff in it but more of a parody of that sort of thing. There is the sort of fish out of water comedy of a massive serial killing alien having to exist on Earth and his love of hunky boys. And then you have all of the effect stuff. And it does really well in balancing them all. It doesn't feel like any bit of it ever gets forgotten. It doesn't just turn into, oh, this is just effects now. Which is really, really good, because although the effects are wonderful, and I will talk about them more later, it still manages to have a lot of heart and soul, even if that's not what you expect from a film called Psycho Goreman. Many moons ago, a nameless evil was imprisoned in a place far beyond reach. Hurry up! Now, the visual aspect of the film is a weird one, because it wrong foots you very early on into thinking it's going to look very 80s because there's clearly that influence on the film. And you open with these sort of scrolling narration over like a sort of jazzy, old-fashioned space background. And that sets you up that you're going to go into something that's got the grindhouse style but for the 80s. The film doesn't actually look like that. It looks much more modern. It's, it's set now, as far as I can remember and I actually think it really benefits from it. This is probably me coming off the back of seeing a few films that have tried to do oh look we look like film stock and it looks awful so I was really quite glad that I didn't have that but I think the main thing is the film isn't the most thrilling cinematography wise but it does exactly what you want it to do and that is show off all the effects. I mean, it's a film in which the main reason to watch it is a bunch of rubber suit monster people hitting each other and then making people's heads explode or gore shooting everywhere. And actually a really crisp, clean image does that a lot of favours because you can see everything. They don't hide any of the monsters behind shadow or loads of grain and blur and, you know, banding or anything like that. It just, you just get to enjoy the wonderful effects and they are wonderful. All of the monster designs are really clever. There are some that pop up for just a couple of scenes and they leave such an impact because they've been so thoughtfully designed. 
there's also just, you don't have to wait. Psycho Goreman has killed about, it's killed like three people in the first ten minutes of the film. It, it really knows that that is exactly what you want to see. Goes big on it. And there is no like, oh, this might not look amazing. It, it just embraces the fact that it's clearly been made to have the aesthetic of the 80s. I mean, it's no surprise, really. Kostansky is, is an effects person. That's how, you know, it's how he's made the money to be able to make this film. So it's no surprise, really, that the effects are so front and centre and that they are great. There are also some other visual effects going on. There's some model work for some alien planets. That looks great. There's some rear projection looking stuff that has a very cheesy quality to it, but it works for the film. There's some like alien landscapes that have clearly just been painted in and they look really good in that they don't look great, but they look right in the they look good in the right sort of way. And I mean the only thing that's not amazing is there's some CGI, there's not a lot of it. And I think because there's not a lot of it, it's not quite up to the standard of the other stuff. But it doesn't really harm the film because there isn't enough of it to harm it. And it's still got a sort of cheesy quality to it anyway. So, effects be good. You will suffer an eternity for this! Bye. The soundtrack for the film is probably the most sort of 80s thing about it. It's by Blitz Berlin, who did the Void soundtrack, which is behind me. Um... And, I mean, this film really deserved a squelchy synth score, and that's exactly what it's got. It, the music here fits fits the movie to a T, really. Um, it's a lot more playful than something like The Void. It, you know, there's it's going into a slightly more sort of Stranger Things-esque vibe of the sort of lightness of that, but it definitely has its own flavour, because I think it would be very easy to compare a lot of this to Strange Things, but it's very much its own thing. It's probably got money because of it, but anyway, I'm getting distracted. Um, it's, I think it's the fact that there's a, there's a lot of synth, but they go for some absolutely sort of radtastic guitar solos. There's some very sort of you know, it's got that metal element to it and, you know, most of the characters look like they have wandered off of a heavy metal album cover from the 80s and it all suits it really well. I mean, you even get a sort of synth, synth rock song with lyrics that's really funny but also really catchy and I don't, I just really like the soundtrack. Um, it's... It's not overbearing. I don't think it's something that, apart from those moments like where there's lyrics and it's sort of played up, it's not something you're going to instantly go, whoa, but I think if you listen to it, if you go looking for it, it's really good. And I'm looking forward to the vinyl coming out. He's going to kill everybody, not unless I tell him to. I think it's very easy to say that if, if Psycho Gorman sounds like your sort of film, it probably is because it really nails being the film that it tells you it's going to be. It it doesn't let you down in any of the aspects that I think it promotes itself as being. On you know, on that same thing, if it doesn't sound like it's right for you, it almost certainly isn't. But it's it's a lot of fun. Um it it, it really, really is entertaining. I found it to be really funny. I have seen some reviews that just the humour didn't land, but I, I, I think it really does. And I think, you know, the cast do a wonderful job of bringing it all to life. Mom, Dad, I watched in the Psycho Gorman, or PG for short. I will bathe in your blood. Don't worry. Be worried. In fact, actually, it's one of the few things where it's an 80s throwback thing where they've set it with kids because everything's set with kids that I think actually you could kind of watch with children. If you are someone who loves horror and you're trying to introduce your children to splattery horror films, Psycho Gorman is actually quite a good choice in my in my opinion because there's there's no sex or nudity. 
there's not a lot of language because there's a lot of frig and heck from the kids instead of full bodied swearing. None of it is scary. So it's just the joyous practical effects that you're left with. And I think the humour would land relatively well for children as well. So yeah, it would actually, it, I think it would work. It's, it's got that sort of, there is a, an unironic childlike quality to it in the same way that something like Turbo Kid has it. Where there's a lot of gore and stuff, but it's got this sort of really quite pure, nice heart. I mean, I've seen people compare it to Troma, and there is an element of that, you know, it's hard to distinct, you know, Psycho Goreman and Toxie share the sort of rubbery nature, but I mean, it's nowhere near as crass or, you know, offensive as something that Troma would put out. And I think this is, this is the best Shudder exclusive that I've seen. It really... It's, it's restored my faith in Shudder because the last few things that I've watched um, have been really disappointing. Uh, this isn't, it's really not disappointing. It's really good. Very, very, very good. And I, I'm looking forward to watching it again. I think it's one that you could watch quite a few times and you'd still enjoy it. In that it's just fun. It's nice to have a fun film for a change that isn't putting you through pain and anguish. Speaking of being put through pain and anguish, uh, this is a little mini review of the other new Shudder exclusive, uh, Skull, The Mask. I was going to do a full review of this, but I couldn't because I didn't finish the film. Um, I was really looking forward to this. I'd heard a lot of good stuff from Fright Fest. Uh, you know, big, gory, Brazilian slash film. That would be great. Um, it's not. Uh, it opens, it makes a very bad impression with some really awful film stock uh, effects, which is why I saw this, I watched this earlier in the day and then watched Psycho Goreman after, and it was, it was painful. It's painful to watch. Uh, watched half of it, nothing had really happened. I'd got to the first bits of gore and they weren't great, and I was just like, I don't have the patience for this anymore. Um, so, yeah, ugly film really boring, uh, didn't get to the effects because I was that bored and I was like, I have better things to do with my time. Uh, so yeah, avoid Skull, watch Psycho Goreman. There's a new god in town, and his name? Psycho Goreman. But that's just my opinion. What did you think of Psycho Goreman? Did you really love it? Did you prefer watching Skull? because you're strange. Let me know down in the comments. Like and subscribe so you don't miss any more videos, and I shall see you next time.